Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I hope everyone's having a great day and let's get to crafting. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to be using four cutting boards, some tumbling tower blocks, some of the little square blocks, and some tube mastic. And then I'm also going to be using a display project board. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut some strips using my tumbling tower block. I'm going to use the width of it to measure the size of my strips that I want. And then using my scissors, I'm just going to cut a few of those out. I wasn't sure how many I would need, but I ended up only needing three of these for this whole project. So once I get these all cut out, I'm going to get my cutting boards ready and I'm just going to stack those all on top of each other. They're pretty close to the same size, but not exactly. And what I'm trying to do is cut off the curved edges from all of my boards because I want to piece these together and make it a thicker cutting board like you see in the stores. So I took some painters tape to put those all together. You could individually cut these with a craft knife or utility knife and do it one by one, but I decided to take it outside and use the miter saw. And of course, once Michael J heard the sound of the machine, he came outside to help me. So I'm just gonna cut off all of those curved edges and then I'm gonna piece them together so that they have the flat edges facing each other because we're making a long cutting board. So I'm gonna be using the strips of cardboard to use as the sides of my cutting board. So I wanna make sure that I have enough depth inside so that it's flush to the outside of my cutting board, if that makes sense. So I'm just marking where I need to put those Jenga blocks a little bit in and my cardboard won't stick out. So then I'm gonna take some all-purpose adhesive and attach the middle of my boards. And then I start using my tumbling tower blocks. You know, it's just easier to call them Jenga pieces. But anyway, I'm gonna take those Jenga pieces so that my cardboard will have something to attach to and hold it in place so that it doesn't cave in once I get it all put together and then I'm going to do this on the neck and all the way around and in the middle and then this way nothing will collapse and it'll be very very sturdy now these square little blocks from the Dollar Tree are a little bit shorter than my Jenga pieces but in order to get something around those corners so that they don't cave in, my cardboard will attach to those so that, again, it doesn't cave in. But I had to use the smaller ones in order to maneuver around those corners. So once I got that outline all finished, I'm going to use the other two boards to attach to the top using some all-purpose adhesive and some hot glue so that it would stick right away. And one thing I would recommend now that I've done this project, instead of staggering your Jenga pieces, just start in the middle where you piece your boards together and then work your way out and then just use your smaller blocks for those corners and I think that'll make it a little bit easier and make sure that you add your Jenga blocks in the middle all the way across so that if you set something heavy on top it won't cave in but once we get the cardboard on and we put some mastic over it and then everything's all dry this is really a substantial piece and super heavy duty I did have to take the front sign off of one of the boards so that it would go down and be level. And I'm gonna use the tacks that are in one of those signs on another project. So now that everything's all put together, I'm gonna take my hot glue and start wrapping my cutting board with those cardboard strips. And it's tight enough that you can actually just stick it in there and it stays, but I did wanna give it a little bit more security with that hot glue. And this is the perfect cardboard to use because it's got those corrugated lines. And so you can kind of just mold it right around those corners and the nooks and crannies of the neck and handle of the cutting board. And then once you get to the end of a piece, just start with a new piece and piece it together. And this is all going to be covered by our mastic and then eventually some paint. So now that that's all put together, this is a really fun part of this project because you get to get a little bit messy. And I just took the mastic and ran it across the edges and the seams and just started using my finger to mold that into that gap and then just get it all nice and sealed up. I do get my mastic from the Dollar Tree, but they usually have the red labels. So I may or may not have grabbed this out of Michael J's supplies, but they do carry it at the Dollar Tree and you can get it either in the tube or in the kind where you need one of those tools to push it out, but the tube is way easier. 
So once I get everything all sealed and my mastic is completely dry, I'm gonna take some black chalk paint, doesn't matter if it's chalk paint or whatever, but because those little holes, you can still see the Jenga pieces, so I'm gonna just paint that completely black and it goes away. So now I'm gonna take my chalk paint in truffle, hazelnut, white, and nimbus, and I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and stick it in all four of those colors and give it a wood grain look so I don't want it completely blended. I just wanna have all those colors on my brush and then just do broad strokes all the way down. And I want my cutting board to be a little bit darker because I want this to go against my new backsplash that is pretty much white, so I really wanted this to show. And if you don't like one side, you always have the other side <laughs> that can be the front or the top. So you have two tries to get this right. And it's just paint, so you can go over it as many times as you need to until you get the look that you want. So now I'm gonna make a decal for the top of my cutting board using my cutting machine. And if you don't have a cutting machine, I am gonna show you how to do the transfer method on another project that we're gonna be doing. So I'm using my white vinyl and using the scripture, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And I'll have the fonts listed in the description box below that I used. I know the top one is cream candy and I can't remember the name of the other one on the bottom, but I'll have that linked in the description box below so that if you do have a cutting machine, you can use these exact fonts or you can use your own. So I'm just gonna weed out my vinyl and then place my transfer tape on top of it, pull the backing sheet off and then put it onto my cutting board, press it down with a squeegee or a credit card or whatever, and then just lift my transfer tape up. And it doesn't bring the paint up or anything as long as you let it dry. I only let it dry about an hour or so, so it stayed on really well, as long as you pull it kind of slowly. And then to get it all nice and sealed, I'm gonna use my Waverly varnish in the matte color, so it's clear, but that'll keep all of my letters on against that paint and keep my paint from chipping and looking super cutie patootie. And here it is all finished and I absolutely love how this turned out. I love the darker wood tones against my white backsplash. And then I have another cutting board behind that for that layered look. I have my dough bowl that I made out of Dollar Tree tombstones last year or the year before that, I can't remember. I might go back in and add Psalm 34, eight. I don't know why I didn't put it the first time. Could have been a senior moment. And then I'll just put some more varnish on top of it to seal that in as well. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For this project, I'm going to be using two square wood signs, one triangle sign, a candle holder, some solo wood type flowers from the Dollar Tree, two wood beads, a wood cross from Walmart, and some jute twine. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull the top part of my one sign off of the front, and I want to use that later because it's super, super pretty, but I'm just going to use my Cricut spatula to get that up. You could heat this up to make it a little bit easier to get off, and then I'm going to take the star off because I wanna get all of my items ready that I'm gonna be painting with my Waverly White chalk paint. Now, this project kinda of turned a couple of ways. I'll explain that a little bit later, but I'm gonna be using my candle holder upside down, and so to fill that hole, I just took some floral moss and popped it in there, and I'm gonna be putting my sign on top of that, but I wanted it to be level and have something to grab onto, and then also we're gonna add some flowers in the front. So. That'll all make sense in a minute. So I started painting all of my items and originally on my larger square frame, I was gonna use it on the back side, but I'm gonna change that up in just a second. So what was gonna be one big project turned into two smaller ones. So now I'm gonna take a pretty wedding picture from my daughter and son-in-law's wedding, and I'm just gonna print it off on my computer. So it's not the greatest of qualities. Of course, you could use a real picture here and that'll get a bit some more stability and you won't have those pesky lines going through it from your printer. So I'm just gonna take my finger to see where I need to cut this out and then once I get it all cut out I'm gonna place it inside of my triangle you could glue this down but I didn't even need to because it was so close to the size it just kind of held itself in there so now I'm gonna take some jute twine and put a dot of that in each of my corners and then wrap my jute twine around it and then I'm just gonna take my tacks from our cutting board in the previous project and tap that in there with a hammer so that it stays snug as a bug in a rug and then I'm gonna do that in the bottom corners 
and then feed one bead on each side of my twine and then tie it in a knot at the top and glue it down with another dot of glue and then I'll take another tack and tap it into there so that it stays in place. I accidentally pulled a little too tight on my jute twine so one side broke but that's okay because I'm going to string on my cross with that extra piece of twine and then just for some more stability I'm going to glue that in place. So the whole purpose of this project is to illustrate that a marriage is not just between two people but three because you have to include God in your relationship and then moving the beads upward toward God as you get closer to him it also makes the beads closer to each other, which represents the closeness between a wife and a husband. I was going to do this as a Valentine's Day project, but I ran out of time. But I think this is a good illustration at any time of the year <laughs> and not just at Valentine's Day because it's always a season of love, right? <laughs> So in my original design for this project, I was going to use the larger square frame and face it backwards and make that the bottom of a house. And then I was going to put my scripture inside of there. So I wanted to make the frame semi match the triangle part, the frame of that part. And then I was going to attach it to the bottom of the triangle and then place it all on top of my candlestick and then place my candlestick on top of the smaller square. But you know I changed my mind quite a bit and it just looked a little bit too big, but that still would have been really cute if it was made into a house and I didn't have quite enough room to put my scripture. So I just changed it up and made two pieces out of one project. So after I got my frame all painted, I'm gonna take my scripture and print it out on my computer. Again, I'll have the fonts listed in the description box below, but this time we're gonna be using the transfer method. So after I print that out, I'm gonna take a number two pencil or something dark and rub it all across the back of my paper. And then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm just using a piece of scrapbooking cardstock because if you remember where I pulled up that front plaque part of the square sign, it left some some ripping on my surface of the sign so I'm going to cover that up with some burlap and then put my sign on top of that. So once I get the back of my wording all covered with my pencil I'm going to place it on top of that cardstock and then just start filling in and going over the letters and I have a piece of painters tape at the top so I can keep lifting it to see if I'm covering all of the surfaces and if it's transferring well enough to see. And then I'm going to go back over it with a sharpie. You could use a paint pen, it doesn't even matter, but now I'm transferring the words on there so that I can trace over those letters. And as you can see, I'm using the scripture Ecclesiastes 4.12, which says, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And so that would be the three, husband, wife, and Jesus. And so I thought that was the perfect scripture for this project. This would be a really good wedding gift if you wanted to make this ahead of time and use a photo from a couple's engagement pictures. You could even go on to Facebook and print out one of their pictures. And I just think it makes it more personal and from the heart if you make it yourself. So once I get that completely transferred onto my cardstock, I'm going to cut that out into a square so it'll fit on top of my sign. And then I'm going to take my eraser and erase all, any pencil marks that I might have left behind. And then I'm going to take the blade of a pair of scissors that are really sharp that a sweet viewer Bren sent me. And I'm going to pull out my Linda at Faith Chick 777 who taught me to distress the edges of my paper so it doesn't just look freshly cut and brand new. And then I'm going to take some scrap burlap, cut out a square, and then using my fingernails, I'm going to fray those edges to get it nice and fibery looking. And then I'll hot glue my sign onto my burlap and then place that onto the front of my sign.
So now I'm gonna take my candle holder and using some permanent adhesive and some hot glue, I'm gonna attach that to my chunky square, the smaller square, just to give it a little more height and some dimension to make it look more, like a more substantial piece, I guess. And then I'm gonna hot glue and also permanently adhere my sign to the top of the candle holder, which is actually the bottom. And then I'm gonna make a sweet little bow for the top of my sign with some burlap. And this I got at burlapfabric.com, but any kind of burlap will work. And I'm just gonna cut the tails at an angle and hot glue it to the top of my sign. So now because we have those gaps on the front and the back, I'm gonna take some of these solo wood looking flowers from the Dollar Tree and just stick those little stems into that floral foam on the front. So that'll cover up that gap. And then I'll take some greenery from Walmart and just pull a couple of those stems off and tuck those in behind using some hot glue so that they stay in place. And then on the back to keep my sign in place, give it some more security and to cover up that little gap, I've just took a couple of Jenga pieces and glued them to the top of my candle holder and then took a second one and glued it to the bottom of my frame and to the back side of that first Jenga piece, if that makes sense. But here it is all finished and I just love this little pairing and I think it's so pretty. Again, it would be perfect for a bridal shower or a wedding present for this. It of course went to my daughter's house. She absolutely loves it. The kids love playing with it and it's also teaching them that lesson that being closer to Jesus brings you closer together. I love it and I hope you like it too. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using this clear container and then the large garden dish. They do have the smaller ones, but this is a larger one. So be sure if you're gonna put these two together, the larger one looks better. And then I'm gonna be using a clear hook to attach to the side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all of my stickers and there were 70 11 of these on here. And then I'll use my all-purpose cement and some hot glue to attach that top to the bottom of my container. And even though the cement is white when you first put it on, it will dry clear. And then I'm gonna take my little hook and attach that with some hot glue at the bottom of my dish, right where the base and the dish come together. And I'm gonna use that to attach a perky bow. So to make my perky bow, I'm gonna take three of the 5 8 inch ribbons from the Dollar Tree in some neutral pretty colors, and I'm just gonna cut those down into strips of 14 inches each, and then I'm gonna fold them over in thirds and then just set them on top of each other, alternating those patterns and styles. And then once I have a big handful of those, I'm gonna take my sharp scissors and make little slits in the middle on each side so that I can wrap some chenille stem around there, twist it in the back, and then that way that's gonna let me move my loops around more easily so it becomes nice and perky. And then I'll take the excess chenille stem, wrap it around that hook, and then I have a little perky bow right at the front of my pedestal. Now I couldn't decide which way I wanted to use this pedestal. I had originally planned to paint it completely white, but before I did that, I wanted to show you how you could use this for different seasons to show off some goodies on the inside of the bottom base part and then change it out at the top with whatever you're displaying. So if it's for Christmas, for example, you could put some ornaments in the top and then put a Christmas sign down below. But for this one, I thought I would just show you using this cross. It's from Dollar Tree and I just cut off the edges of the bow to get it a little more under control. And then I have my cake topper from our wedding that I stuck underneath it. And then I took some scrap greenery and placed that in the dish and then added some baby's breath and a candle from the Dollar Tree. And then I took some white roses and just made a little border around here. The possibilities are endless, but no matter what, I just thought that was a really fun way to show off some seasonal cuteness or just everyday cuteness, whatever suits your fancy. Another quick idea, you can make a potted plant by using one of the clay pots from the Dollar Tree and then just 
lighten it up or you could leave it the way it is but I used some Waverly white chalk paint to get that a little bit distressed looking and a little lighter and then just took my floral foam and cut it down to fit inside and then just stuck it into my pot and then I'm going to take some more of those scrap greenery pieces from Walmart and just poke them right into that floral foam and you have a sweet little plant which you can use anywhere and I'm going to use it again after we paint this also so I'm just going to put this under my pedestal and you have an everyday little display. And then I took this super sweet creamer pitcher from Dollar Tree and just added some baby's breath. I couldn't see my plant as well with the bow on so I just put that right on top and added a little ceramic bird and it's done. And I think this is a really sweet way of just adding some greenery and some cuteness. And it's versatile because you can change it out for the seasons as well. But I love it and I hope you like it too. So now for my original idea, I ended up painting it completely white using my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to give this two coats and I painted the dish portion on the inside and the outside. And then once that's completely dry, I'm going to take my Sharpie pen and you could also use a paint pen and just go around the edges of those scallops so that they really stand out because I thought those were super cute. And I always tell you when I'm doing my enamel wear look, I wait to do any of those little chippy marks until the very end because as you can see, chances are I'm going to go out of the lines and so I'll use Use those opportunities those mess ups to make the pretties and make it look more authentic so I'm going to do that all the way around on my scallops and then on the lip of my dish and go back when I'm finally done and make some chippy marks in random spots So now I'm going to take this rub on transfer sheet that has all kinds of different words on there and this is a little bit time consuming but what I ended up doing is cutting them all apart and if you just use your fingernail you could also use a little credit card or a squeegee or anything. I think my fingernail was the easiest way to do it though but you don't want to touch the back side once you pull the backing sheet off of the back of this rub on because it will stick to your fingers. So I'm going to place them where I want them and you can move it a little bit if you don't push it down too hard so that it was more spread out on my base and I just thought this was such a pretty look. But again it is a little bit time consuming but I think it's totally worth it. So then I took some black and white check ribbon from a sweet viewer robin and just tie a sweet little bow around the top of my plant to coordinate with the base of it. Place that on top and then add a couple of wooden houses that I also did a while back and it's done. And here it is all finished and I just think this is so cute and I have my sweet bunny from Ross's Dress for Less that I got a few years ago. I just love him so much and a beaded garland that another sweet viewer made for me that was from Gretchen but anyway I just love how this turned out and I hope you guys like it too. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. If you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!